So what I'm going to be discussing with you today is the lenses of social studies with a special focus on geography. So what's the purpose of a lens? Lenses help us to see things, to clarify, to bring into focus different things that we want to see and study and hopefully understand. But there are limits to what a lens can do. As you see on the image, the outside is a little bit fuzzy. So sometimes we need to change that lens to see different things. So for example, it wouldn't make any sense to use one lens to see the moon and zoom into the moon and the same lens to in our glasses because I can't read anymore. They would be very different lenses. And so we need to use these different lenses for different purposes. All of us have personal lenses that we utilize in our lives. So for example, I'm a father. I have two amazing kids. I have a beautiful wife. And oftentimes she'll remind me, Dave, I, I just don't see it that way. And this is the secret to 30 years of marriage. You know what, honey? You're right. <laughs> um, I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a huge sports fan. Go Avs this week. Um, but I also have professional lenses. All of us do. I'm an educator. I'm a writer. I'm sure my English teacher probably would say, least, per least likely person to write a book, Dave Palmer, and be shocked that I wrote a book. But it frames who I am a little bit. I'm also a coach. I'm gifted with, I'm able to work with children and kids every day and be able to build things into their life. So I'm grateful for that fact. And all of us have our own personal lenses that frame who we are. Now, businesses have a lens in which they look at things. And a study done down in, back in 2017 as to what are the top job skills for 2020 that they're going to need. And a list of these include complex problem solving skills, such as cognitive flexibility, being able to think about things differently our world is changing, it's dynamic, and we can't have static viewpoints of the world. Creativity, we need to practice creativity. Creativity takes practice. Social skills, there's a lot of concern about social skills in our society with the advent of personal devices and students being able to, how do we interact with people? Do we have emotional intelligence to be able to understand the peers that they're working with on a daily basis but also the emotional intelligence to be able to identify problems that are going on in the world and that, yes, we should care about that, and that's important. And then, of course, there's processing skills. Active listening, you know, and we all struggle with this. Here's our, here's our device. Oh, yeah, I'm listening. I, I got you. And we know that's irritating, but these are active listening skills, and how do we, how do we help our students to understand these things? And then, finally, critical thinking. Now, critical thinking is this broad-based thing, but really critical thinking surrounds problem solving. Those two are inter interwoven in my estimation. So, there's all of this discussion of STEM, and I think STEM is great. I have a son who's a computer science major, but he's rooted in a strong social studies background. And while it's great, it's not the whole picture. And we need to help our students complete what that picture looks like. So, as a teacher, I'm faced with students all the time, and they ask me, Mr. Palmer, I'm a math science kid, man. I don't, I don't do social studies. Why do I need to take a social studies class? And I want you to think about that for a moment and ponder how you would answer that question. Now, there's a lot of ways to answer this question. And I've given a lot of thought to this, and my answers usually come down to some variation of this. I'm a firm believer that technological solutions need to be rooted in an understanding of people and places. Because what's the point of creating a solution if it's not to help people? If it's not designed to take into account the unique aspects of different people around the world? Not everybody, every community is the same. They don't all need the same solution. 
we need to be able to customize things and develop solutions that help people in varying spaces and places and take into account their culture, their beliefs, their values, their individual circumstances. And in order to do that, students need to understand people. So social studies has lots of lenses. You have history, geography, economics, political science, and there's a whole myriad of them. And each one of them honestly deserves individual discussion and time. But I only have time to deal with one today. And so I'm going to focus in on geography. Now, no matter which field of study that we, study, that we look at, I'm a firm believer that our students should learn to think like a geographer, think like an economist, think like a political scientist. Those are important lenses for our students to develop. They should learn the questions, the key questions, and the understandings of what these types of fields ask and be prepared to answer them and grapple with them. I also think that students should do the work of economists and political scientists and historians and geographers, not just read about it, but they should actually do it. And we also need to make it real. Problem solving was one of the issues up here. And if we want to, how do you practice solving problems? Solving problems. And we need to solve real problems, not fictitious problems. And our students will get better at it if we allow them to do those things. So let's take a look at what does geography offer. Oftentimes, geography is referred to as the spatial perspective. So what does that mean? I'm, I teach AP Human Geography, and people ask me, OK, that's great. What does that mean? And most people know that geography has to do with location, where things are. And they think, Dave, do you know every place in the world and all the cap? No, I don't. But what a geography studies is where things are, certainly. But why are things where they're at? How did they get there? Why does that pattern exist? And, and why does that pattern exist? And then what are the impacts of the patterns that exist in this world? And how do we study them and make sense of them and, and figure out the impacts of that, whether it's economic or social or political impacts upon people, the demographic impacts. There's all kinds of myriads of things that can have impacts, the environmental impacts. And we should look at those and study those. And it's a grid in which we can understand the world. So let's look at a real world issue. So this is electrification rate by country. And we can see there's been improvements since 1994 to 2014 in the access to electricity in the world today. And that's good, but this still leaves a large percentage of people that don't. And the map will illustrate, and students should ask the question, I see patterns. Which countries have high electricity rates, access to electricity, which countries don't, and why not, and what is the impact on their lives, and things to that effect. So one thing geography can do is we have this wonderful ability of changing scale. So here's the Earth at night, and we've seen some images today. And this is the Earth at night, and with the, once again, it's a map. And thank STEM for being able to go up in space and take that picture. We appreciate that. Now it's our job to interpret it. And when we can see why are some places bright and some places dim and some places are not kind of in the middle, and analyzing those patterns. And then when the global scale, we change to the continental scale, we'll call it. We zoom in. And at this scale, we can see different patterns that exist. We can see that the East Coast is much brighter than the West from where I live. But at the same time, in Colorado, we can see a, a line of cities that extends down. And we can see the linear patterns that exist across this country. And we can start to analyze why. How did these come to be? What is the impact? What if the highway went here and not over here? Reference to the movie Cars. Okay. We zoom in again. And we look at this. This is Puerto Rico. We zoom into Puerto Rico. The top map is an image before Hurricane Maria in 2017. The second is after Hurricane Maria came through. Now, it's obviously going to take a STEM solution to how do we get the lights turned back on. There's a technical aspect to that. But there's critical thinking that needs to go into play as to where is the most impacted regions going to be, and how do we help those people first? What are the needs that are going to exist on the human scale that we need to assist those people, and how do we go about doing that, putting uh, actions into place? 
And we need to zoom in once again and see at the local scale, what does it look like to people? Not just this esoteric map from space, but we also need to zoom in and understand how is it impacting people on the, on the, close to us, or even far a place, but understanding what they're doing and how they're feeling. Social studies has an amazing ability to shine lights on people that might not be heard, and it's our obligation to tell those stories, to let people know about those things, not to feel guilty, but to solve real-world problems. So, social studies brings into focus lots of things. And as a reminder, we want our students to think like a geographer. We want them to be able to question like a geographer. And we want them to do geography and make it real. And most importantly, we want them to understand why they should care about people and how we can solve those problems. And remember, STEM is important, but it's not the whole picture, and social studies and geography have a lot to add to that picture. Thank you very much.